Today, I'm gonna to share with you two secret techniques to create retro digital art. What's going on everyone? My name is Tom from Dread Labs and I'm a graphic designer and visual artist. And in today's video, I'm gonna share with you two different techniques in Adobe Photoshop that help you either create glitch art or help you create a retro digital look for your designs. I came across these techniques during my Creatober challenge while I was designing 31 designs in 31 days. And essentially I thought, I never really saw a video on this, maybe someone shared it, but I might as well, uh, because people were asking me about it in the comments. So here we are. Anyways, let's dive straight into Photoshop and let's start with method number one. I just made a canvas of 3000 by 3000 pixels and we're gonna give this a background fill. Let's do this with a white background fill, I think that works best. So the first technique that we're gonna use is a glitch technique and it's actually pretty, pretty cool. And we're gonna use a filter that you might never even heard of in Photoshop. So I'm gonna add in some text. The font that I'm using here, by the way, is called Another OS and you can get it through the link down below. Anyways, what we're gonna do is right click convert to smart object and the next thing that we want to do is go to filter other offset so it's the very last filter in photoshop actually if you look at it on this list essentially the offset filter just lets you move pixels either to the right to the left up or down so it's not really that special if you just look at it from this perspective i'm just going to add in 100 and 100 So nothing has really changed with this filter other than we just move this thing to the right and down a little bit. But the thing is, we actually turn this into a smart object. And when we use a smart object, we can use smart filters. That means that we can still edit our filter right here. So we can also just move it back to 50 and 50 if we want to. But the cool thing also is that smart filters do have masks. If you don't know what masks are, I do have a video on them, but essentially we can paint in different parts where we want this filter to happen or for this filter not to happen. So this works on based on black and white values. So if I just grab a normal black brush and I start painting with the mask here selected, as you can see, wherever we start painting with our brush is where the filter stops happening. And I can show you the mask view here. So if we hold Alt or Option on our keyboard and we click on the filter mask, you can see this is what we drew inside the mask. And this is the result of that. So that's actually pretty cool because we can already get a really nice glitch effect on our text. But let's just take this one step further. I'm gonna just press Ctrl or Command Z. So we are just back with the normal offset filter. And I'm gonna make a new layer. I'm gonna go to Filter, Render, Clouds. And you've probably maybe are familiar with the Clouds filter, but this generates a random noise pattern. The next thing that we wanna do is go to Filter, Pixelate, Mosaic. And I think 20 is okay. You do want to have the pixels visible. So uh, if we just make it really small, you cannot really see that this is pixelated. But this obviously depends on the size of your canvas. And in my case, with a canvas of 3000 by 3000 pixels, I think a square of 20 is okay. And the next thing we want to do is go to image, adjustments, curves, and you want to make a circle like this. So it goes up, then it goes down and then goes back up. And then again, we'll go to mode adjustments, threshold. And as you can see, we now have a glitchy pixely pattern. We're gonna press Ctrl or Command A on our keyboard and we're gonna copy it by pressing Ctrl or Command C. And then we're just gonna hide this layer. Then we're gonna hold Alt or Option on our keyboard and click on the smart filter here. And then we're gonna click on paste. So what happens now in the layer menu, you can already see it. We used our uh, pattern that we made and we pasted that in as a layer mask for the smart filters on text. So if we press Alt once again, so we're gonna go out of this mask, you can see that the text has been completely glitched. So that's really cool. We now actually have a very nice randomized pattern uh, of distortion and glitches. The cool thing is that you can actually have way more control over this than you might think at first sight. For example, with the mask here selected, Gonna press Ctrl or Command T on our keyboard, and this lets us scale up or down the glitch effect, as you can see right here. But if we hold Shift while doing it, we can also scale this down, for example. So we have a very nice horizontal glitch. And we could do the same thing, of course, with vertical glitches as well. I think this is actually pretty cool. You can also just make the offset way less, for example, 10 by 10. 
and this way we have a glitch effect while the text is still readable but for the art that i want to make today i think actually 50 might just work a little bit better so that's the first method of today's video but before we continue into the second technique i want to ask you something would you like to get access to photoshop files illustrator files a discount on assets and much more you actually can by becoming a dreadlabs patron member if you don't know i release a tutorial on a weekly basis we're almost speaking 500 videos on the channel now as we speak and I wouldn't be able to create this many videos if I wasn't able to do Dreadlabs full time. If I wouldn't get enough income out of Dreadlabs, I would be forced to get another job and if I would be forced to do that, I wouldn't have enough time to create a video every week. So essentially, more Patreon members means more Dreadlabs content. Like I said, we're almost speaking 500 videos as we speak and I'm not planning on stopping anytime soon because if you look after me right there, you can see it kind of in the corner. I do have a lot of ideas for new videos. Anyways, as a thank you for becoming a Patreon, you'll get access to all of my project files from all of my tutorials, which is over 100 Photoshop files, over 60 Illustrator files, as well as Cinema 4D files, After Effects files, and more. On top of that, you'll also get a 15% discount in my asset web store, where I sell textures, vector packs, 3D renders, and more. Finally, you'll also get an exclusive role in the Dreadlabs Discord community server, where we talk about design and music production mainly, ask and answer questions, give each other feedback, and much more. There's also a slightly more expensive tier that also gives you access to exclusive videos, such as how to start your own clothing brand, how to make a death metal logo from scratch, and many more videos. You'll also get access to all of the project files from my Creatober series, which is about an additional 100 project files. So I wanna give a huge shout out to all of my patrons because thanks to them, I am actually able to give you guys these videos. If you are on the budget, you can also subscribe for just one month, and this will give you access to everything in one go, and you can just unsubscribe immediately. But beware, however, because new project files are added every single month. If you don't have the money to support Dreadlabs, of course, that's completely fine, I understand. But leaving a like and a comment for the algorithm also does a lot. And you might not be subscribed yet, but I encourage you to do so because there's new tutorial videos coming every single week. Sharing this video also helps out a lot but mainly commenting and liking for the algorithm. A couple of weeks ago, one of my videos did a lot better just because you guys commented and liked the video so much, so it actually does help me out a lot. So if you consider supporting my channel and helping me, that would mean a lot to me. But for now, let's just turn back into the video and I'm gonna show you method number two. All right, so this is where we left off. What I'm gonna do here is give this a digitalized look with an emboss effect. And I'm not talking about the bevel emboss layer style that we usually do on Chrome type and stuff like that. I'm talking about another filter that I remember from back in the day from the early 2000s when we were doing effects on like Windows computers. This effect is also actually visible in Photoshop and it can make for some really interesting stuff. What I'm going to do first is press Command or Control, All or Option, Shift and E on my keyboard. And this will duplicate everything that's visible so far. So now we have an extra layer with the white background and the glitched text here. I'm also going to turn that into a smart object so we can actually go back into these filters and change them. The first thing that I want to do is go to the filter gallery, go to the texturizer right here. The texture that I'm going to use is sandstone. Maybe scale it up to 125 because our canvas is pretty large and you really have maybe five. That should work for now. This is just so we have a little bit of depth in our uh, just white plain texture, if that makes sense. And if we zoom in, we can also see that it's in there on the text. So that's good. Next thing I'm going to do is go to Filter, Stylize, Emboss. And this is the effect that I've been looking for. And the stupid thing is I completely forgot that this thing existed. But just during my Creatober challenge, I rediscovered it. And I just really like how things can turn out with this effect. So we can change the angle of the bevel and emboss effect. Basically, that means where your highlights and your shadows will be. You can change the height so you can also just make it really, really harsh. Uh, this really doesn't work in my opinion. What you want to do is to keep this a little bit lower. So keep the height under 10 pixels and the amount somewhere between, I think, 25 and 0. Let's just go with 25 for now. And we'll just click OK. And as you can see, this now creates a nice 3D digitalized look. It looks like it's etched out of some stone or something like that. It is a little bit harsh, as you can, look, as you can see. So what we can do is go to Filter. Blur, Gaussian Blur, and we'll just do a filter of 0.5 pixels. So we don't really see that it's blurry, but it's just adding a little bit more pixel data in there. If we want to, we can add some noise, just a little bit, maybe like 3%. And one thing I want to do now is we do have a lot of regular textures in here. As you can see, like the noise is just, it seems like it's just an, a perfect pattern and there's no irregularities or whatever. 
And I want to solve that by just adding a regular texture. So the regular texture that I'm going to use is from the Dreadlabs Ray Flyer Essentials. So this pack contains a couple of uh, textures as you can see, and I would like to add in some warmer textures, something like this. So let's drop that in and we'll change this blend mode to multiply. And while we do so, we're pressing Ctrl or Command M on our keyboard, which brings up the curves menu. I will just turn this texture a little bit lighter, something like this. And as you can see, we do now have these irregularities in here. Uh, the thing is, we do want to make this a little bit lighter. So let's add in another texture, maybe this one. We'll scale it up and we'll change the blend mode to screen. And of course, since this is a really light texture, the blend mode as screen isn't really that ideal so let's just make this texture a little bit darker but in a way that we can actually lighten our artwork a little bit like this and there we have it two secret methods to achieve this really glitchy computer processed style what i really like about this is for me this style really feels like there was an alien civilization once and i don't know like you find something like this uh that kind of like proves that there were aliens around like thousands of years ago because it has that like old school feeling like it's etched out of stone while also having these really perfect digitalized unreadable kind of looking texts so yeah that's i really like that about this style and i'm going to show you one uh, example that i used this in during creatober but yeah i really like this style and what you can see on the screen right now is an example that i used this technique in uh, I processed this a little bit more as you can see for example I really went ham when it came to distorting the text up here. Uh, you can real still see that this is basically the same technique that we use in this video but then we used uh, the text solar system. I think it's also the same font but if you just use this on a defined poster like this you can really see how that could work in terms of creating a very very nice poster. One thing I still want to show you guys is this technique is something that I knew about, like I said in the video, but I never really knew how to apply this technique to posters and stuff in my style until I saw designs by 67PCG. I'm going to show you his Instagram real quick. So I spoke to this designer a couple of years ago in my DMs, and as you can see, this is the poster that he designed, so it's really inspired by this one. I am absolutely in love with his work, so if you are thinking that this style is really cool, he doesn't really post that often anymore. I think his last post was in 2021. But yeah, if you look at this, this is just amazing, and I think this is really inspiring work. This is one of those design pages that I wished was more active, but then again, at the same time, this is one of my best kept secret inspiration accounts. So yeah, huge shout out to 67PCG. Uh, if you want to follow him, I'll put a link to his Instagram account in the description. And yeah, I hope this video inspired you to start creating these kinds of arts yourself. Maybe you have a couple of other methods that you think would work really well with this technique. If so, let me know down in the comments because I would love to try it out. And like I said, if you do want to support the channel, you can become a Patreon member. You can also shop something from our asset web store, as well as like, comment and subscribe if you haven't already. With all of that being said, this is Tom from Dreadlabs tuning out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.